Hey guys, welcome to uh, week seven. And uh, this week I just want to take a quick moment um, to go over our final paper, a quick overview. Um, and then I just want to maybe give you a little example of what um, we might be looking for in this final paper um, in case you haven't been able to find anything that you think might fits the criteria. Uh, if you have a problem with that, you can let me know and uh, hopefully together we can come up with something. But I thought maybe if I gave you an example um, that it might be helpful to you as, as you think about how to incorporate some of the ideas and concepts that we've studied over the last several weeks uh, into a final paper. It, it's really not going to be as complicated as it may seem, um, but I'll walk you through it and maybe, maybe give you a little uh, a couple of tips, okay? So first, let's just quickly go over the assignment. Uh, now remember, there are two parts to the assignment. There's a written part, and then the second part is you need to prepare a narrated PowerPoint presentation summarizing your research and conclusions, and your research uh, PowerPoint presentation should be at least 10 slides long, okay? So there's no length on how long the narration should be, but I think uh, you can cover it just a couple of minutes on each slide or minute. And I think that'll probably work out for, for us. Um, so uh, just remember as you prepare your assignment that you also have to do the PowerPoint presentation, okay? So the written instructions are you to review an event, a department organization and or organizational issue that are sufficiently complex to include multiple components of our areas of study. And we've, we've covered a lot of material. Um, and there's a lot of concepts that you've learned that you can apply to just about any type of situation I think that you can think of. So hopefully um, that will be a problem. Um, for example, you could debrief an individual unit failure, exceptional accomplishment that wasn't a direct result of outstanding or deficient application of information, knowledge management that is sufficiently complex to allow you to review and reach a conclusion on how the event was handled and the influential factors. Uh, so at a minimum, your paper should address the following. You should summarize the event, identify the issues in this section. You should highlight specific theories that were discussed in the chapters. Was the application of theories positive or negative? Because uh, remember, in a lot of the chapters, the authors often provided two sides to a lot of the theories uh, that we talked about, um, because not everyone agrees, for example, that um, knowledge is only obtained explicitly. Uh, some believe that it's more tacit, or some believe that there's a combination of the two, or there's no such thing as a knowledge uh, worker, that all work is knowledge work. So. There's issues to both sides. So, uh, you know, as you develop your ideas and you start thinking of the concepts that might apply, then you can be looking at some of the theories and see how they tie into that. Um, so you're going to, again, summarize the event, look at specific theories, impact, how did the identified issues impact the organization and unit. Uh, so now you're applying the theories or the concepts to the specific event that you're researching. Any contributing factors that uh, you can think of? What corrective action was taken or should be taken to avoid a repeat of the event? In other words, how can we prevent this failure from happening again? Or is there something that, that we can say this is something that we should consider in, in all future types of situations involving the same fact pattern? Um, and then uh, apply some uh, significance of religion or faith to this event. Uh, and as you think about that, try to come up with, with a couple of different um, biblical scripture passages that you think might support that. Um, you know, depending on the version of the Bible that you may have, um, you know, sometimes they have them by different um, types of topics. So, for example, there might, uh, some Bibles you can look in the back and they'll, they'll reference a biblical scripture that has to do with uh, hatred or gratitude or something along those lines and that way you have a couple of different choices to choose from so uh, give this some thought as well as, as you develop your paper okay so again 
go back, give it, give it some thought um, as you think about an event or something you're intimately aware of with wherever you work within the department or organization or something like that. And then, you know, how you can apply that to our paper. All right. Uh, and then in a minute, I'll go over uh, a, a, a sample, so to speak, um, and then just sort of tell you uh, some of the concepts and theories that we might be able to tie to that so you have an idea of what we're looking for. Uh, the paper, again, six to eight pages in length, so it's not a, a big paper, and a minimum of three sources are required, so the textbook can be one source. Uh, the book is rich in detail. In other words, they've done a lot of research for you. So if you think about it, um, you know, you could go to the, to the reference section at the back of the book, and uh, they have the sources already there, so uh, you can use some of those references as well. Um, just a little factoid there on, on how to multiply your number of sources for you. Uh, and then, again, uh, prepare a narrative PowerPoint. Okay, so that's the overview this time, so make sure you take a look at that. Uh, let me go over the grading rubric real quick, and I know you can't see it here, but I emailed everyone the grading rubric and the assignment guidelines, so you should have gotten that today, which is uh, Sunday the 14th of October. Uh, so I did send that out today, uh, and I'll also post it um, here when I post this short announcement. But please take a look at the grading rubric, because that's going to be um, how your assignment is going to be evaluated um, so there are, in our particular case, there are five different dimensions. So some of these dimensions might require you, uh, for example, the first dimension, which has to do with understanding terminology, uh, technologies, and so forth. A student connects a multiple three plus technology concepts and appropriate terminology within their capstone project. So should be too challenging um, to identify at least three concepts um, related to our textbook. So when it talks about technology, we're really talking about you know, the information you got from the textbook, knowledge management, what concepts, theories you were able to take from that, and then how they might be able to be applied to your topic. So to correctly apply it to your topic. Uh, so again, go through and look because some of these require, you know, at least three uh, in order to get the exemplary rating along uh, with some other things in terms of has to be thoroughly discussed and you know, demonstrates you have a good understanding of what you're talking about. Um, so those are uh, things I think you really need to take take a look at as you develop your final paper. Okay, so again, take a look at the grading rubric, and this is the this is it. This is page one, uh, and then this is page two. Um, and so when you look at in terms of what role faith plays. Um, you can read what is required for the exemplary rating so that as you prepare that part or that dimension of your paper, um, you can make sure you fulfill those requirements for an exemplary rating, okay? Um, and then the same thing for your oral skills and visual presentation. Uh, take a look at that so you know basically uh, what is required. So take a look at that as you develop your final paper, all right? Um, so who is this? Um, I, I came across this little idea for this part of my short lecture today uh, in watching a movie a couple of weeks ago. Um, um, so this is, this is the focus of that movie. Um, and this guy was active for probably close to 17 years. Um, some of you may recall this, this uh, sketch this is probably one of the most, most famous sketches. Uh, if you don't remember, that's okay. Uh, but this is Ted Kaczynski. And Ted Kaczynski ended up being the unit bomber. And so the movie I watched had to do with the unit bomber, but more, it had to do with the agent, a guy named James Fitzgerald, and his role in capturing the unit bomber. But more specifically, uh, the movie gave you a good idea of the dynamics that were taking place within the FBI task force, which I thought was probably a good example to use for um, the texts for our, what I would write a paper on maybe in terms of knowledge management, because a lot of the concepts that we study 
about knowledge, uh, sharing ideas, trust, organizational structure, um, power and politics all seem to come into play uh, as this movie developed and evolved. Um, now the Unabomber, uh, and Unabomber means uh, UN is university, A for airlines, and then bomber. Because this guy had set off at least two bombs on an airplane um, that exploded, nobody was uh, killed. Uh, and then uh, he sent several to universities in which people were killed, uh, but they're all mail bombs of some type. And so that's how he got the name Unabomber. And he was active for about 17 years, 15 years, until he was uh, finally arrested, uh, pled guilty, and is now in federal prison. Um, now, by the time this guy, James Fitzgerald, got to the task force, the task force had already been in existence for a number of years, probably at least 10 years. Um, and at that point, the FBI had already established a profile for the Unabomber. Um, and one of the first things that uh, Agent Fitzgerald had realized was that um, the FBI, the higher-ups in the FBI, weren't going to change the profile. Uh, so I, I sort of related that challenge. In other words, the fact that they were unwilling to realize that that profile may be wrong, and in fact it was, and the one that Fitzgerald developed was in fact a more profile uh, dealing with the characteristics of Ted Kaczynski than the original profile. You know, to me it sort of went back to that topic of unlearning. Um, in other words, the FBI, at least ways the higher ups, um, weren't interested in changing the profile, in other words, unlearning, realizing that there may be uh, a different profile that would meet um, the guy that they were looking for. And so that was this guy's biggest challenge within this organizational structure of the FBI task force was trying to get them to unlearn. Now our textbook talks about different types of unlearning. Um, they talk about typology of organizational forgetting um, and the whole idea here was that as a task force, you know, they had already established this um, profile 10 years earlier, and it was something that they definitely were not going to change as uh, it moved along. And so I thought about that and I realized that, you know, maybe we could tie the concept of unlearning into that, uh, uh, maybe add the different types of unlearning, see which one of those concepts of principles might be most accurate to reflect why the higher ups within the organization were reluctant to change the profile or to think that maybe another profile existed uh, because after 17 years they hadn't caught this guy uh, something was in this uh, but they were um, very adamant about their original profile and it took some convincing on the part of Fitzgerald and this was after he left the task force uh, for the FBI to actually listen to the to what he had to say. Uh, the supervising agent in charge of the task force um, kept telling Fitzgerald that he wasn't interested in a profile. He wanted a name. Uh, and ultimately, Fitzgerald gave him the name of Ted Kaczynski. But uh, that took some time. And uh, in that period of time, other bombs had uh, exploded or that he had sent. Okay. So part of what um, Fitzgerald had to do was his job was to evaluate letters and uh, Fitzgerald's job was in linguistics. In other words, uh, he learned a lot by the style of writing that people had, the words that they used, the format of their writing. Uh, that was his little expertise. Uh, there was really no linguistic forensics around at the time. In fact, he, he created that concept of linguistic uh, forensics. Um, and so, again, the whole idea of unlearning, uh, the, the fact that we're trying something new, uh, knowledge-based, um, and whether or not people were willing to trust him. And that was another thing that was uh, common throughout this movie was the sense of lack of trust, uh, because nobody uh, was willing to uh, agree with him as to what he thought the profile of the Unabomber actually was.
Okay, I'm going to stop here. We're going to go to part two. So hang on just a sec.